All right, so now we're gonna start the sulfonation of naphthalene to make two naphthalene sulfonic acid. And to do that, we're going to load this with 45 ml of 93% sulfuric acid. And we're gonna start heating this. And once it melts and gets to about 160 degrees Celsius, we will drip in the uh, sulfuric acid over the course of about 10 minutes and then let it stir for an additional five at 160 degrees Celsius, and then let the mixture cool down. So as you can see, the naphthalene is now melting. It's around uh, 100 degrees Celsius. And there's some, since naphthalene is sublimed, it's subliming and solidifying on the top of the, uh, of the beaker, the size of the beaker, I mean. So if too much sublimes, we'll blast it with the heat gun and get it to melt off. Flowing liquid and the temperature is about 140 degrees C. Once it gets to around 160, we'll start dripping in the um, sulfuric acid, which I have loaded into the addition funnel. The temperature is around 160 degrees now, so we will start the addition of the sulfuric acid at a slow pace. And as you can see, on addition of the sulfuric acid, the solution begins to change color. From a clear liquid to a dark solution. So in a couple of seconds you see that I'm blasting the heat on um, the naphthalene that's condensed on the first. As you can see, it clears away. So that's why I think this is useful to have just in case uh, something like this were to happen. And as you can see, the solution is getting darker and darker with the additional more sulfuric acid. It's pretty neat. After the addition of almost all the sulfuric acid, the solution turns a black color. So now, after all the sulfuric acid is added, we will um, let the solution cool down to around 100 degrees Celsius, and then we're going to add it to 350 ml of distilled water. Okay, so the apparatus has been disassembled, and we're going to pour the solution into 350 ml of water. Like that. It was left to cool down to about 140 degrees C. And now you see there's a precipitate. That's our naphthalene 2-sulfonic acid. Pretty cool, right? So now we're going to put this on stirring. And we're going to partly neutralize it with sodium bicarbonate. So we have here about 25 grams of sodium bicarbonate. And we're going to add it very slowly because it's going to cause some some fizzing as you see and once it is all added we are going to heat the solution and then once the solution is boiled we're going to salt it out with um, a large amount of table salt and, at, and the more we add this solution of uh, sodium bicarbonate the thicker this uh, solution is probably going to get so the the, you need to have some strong stirring As you can see, it gets pretty pretty pasty at the top. So I'm gonna add it all, and if anything interesting happens, if there's a color change, I'll document that, and uh, I'll show you. So I thought I saw an interesting property of this. Um, it's kind of a murky solution. If you stop stirring it, as you can see, it's like particulate matter inside the solution, and it looks like very wispy. And I think it's undissolved um, sodium bicarb. And then when you stir it again, it kind of looks like a, like a snow globe, kind of. It's pretty cool. So now we're going to heat this solution up to boiling, and then we're going to add 40 grams of average table salt and let it cool. Okay, so as we can see, the liquid is now boiling. So now we're going to add about 40 grams of you know, common table salt, sodium chloride, to the solution. And we'll raise the stirring. 
and if you see at the bottom, and you should start to see a precipitate pretty soon. So I'm going to make a time lapse and see what we see. So as you can see, as the solution cools down, more of the sodium napoline sulfonate is going to precipitate out of the solution. And it's going to become a very thick slurry. Eventually, it's just going to solidify into a mass. So um, I guess we'll just take it off the heat so it cools down quicker. And once that happens, we'll just put it onto some filter paper and we're going to squish it to get all the mother liquor out. So we're going to recrystallize the sodium napoline sulfonate salt. And to do that, we placed it in 350 ml of 5% sodium chloride solution. So it's not soluble because of the salt, as you can see. There's undissolved particles of the sodium salt. And once it heats up, it should dissolve, and then um, it'll recrystallize. So as we can see, the mixture's become uh, pretty much homogeneous mixture. There's just some chunks of stuff that aren't dissolving. And it's probably, if I have to guess, some naphthalene because I kind of overmeasured a little bit um, and put a little extra naphthalene in. So that's probably what it is. Okay, so now to get rid of those chunks of naphthalene, we're going to do a hot filtration by just pouring this through some filter paper. A little bit at a time. As you can see, I'm using a heat resistant glove because um, this solution gets pretty, is pretty hot and you can get burned. So, always thinking about safety. The precipitation of the solution of the sodium uh, naphthalene sulfonate is almost like immediate uh, as it poured in. So it's making the, it's making the, um, filtration process pretty slow so gravity filtration may not have been the best option for this but um, it's the only thing I have at my disposal but as you can see we're getting some nice fine very pure crystals forming in the beaker which is pretty nice it's just gonna take a really long time and as you see there's a bunch of gunk at the top over here so once it's done filtering I'll show you the end product the gravity filtration is definitely not the most um, efficient method uh, if you look there's like some crystallization happening on the filter which is making filtration very slow and as you can see my the stir bar is the stir rods acting as kind of like a seed for a lot of the crystals so um, if you were to do this I'd say use um, a vacuum filtration if you could sadly um, I don't have a vacuum filter that um, that can accommodate uh, this amount of volume so we're just gonna have to suffer the loss of yield but I mean I'm I don't need this much napoline sulfonate anyways so it's not a that big a deal and if anything I could recrystallize what I get, keep in the in the filter paper again from a smaller batch of liquid so it's not the end of the world and as you can see down here I spilled some and it immediately crystallized out on the table we're getting some beautiful white shiny crystals in the um in the beaker so now we're just going to um let the solution cool and then we'll just filter it off again and let the crystals dry so i'll show you what that happens probably take around an hour or two and i'm just going to clean up this little mess i made <laughs> those were left to sit for a little while as you can see <laughs> basically turned into one solid rock of crystals. So now we're going to put it into here, and then I'm going to squeeze it with some cheesecloth to get any of the mother liquor out. So now I have the crystals contained inside some cheesecloth, as you can see, and I'm going to basically crank the cheesecloth down to get the rest of the liquid remaining inside the crystals that's like being stubborn and is it coming out due to gravity filtration out and let's see how much liquid remains inside the crystals by going about it like this <sighs> and 
And remember, this is, isn't just regular water, it's salt water. So if we let this evaporate, there will actually be um, sodium chloride impurity in our, in our snappling salt. So, not ideal. So, in the end about almost 200 mls. So look, actually it looks like about 175 mls extra water that was actually maintained in that solution. So now I'm just gonna put it on some filter paper, um, some new filter paper and some paper towels and let it dry. So here is our, uh, our nice dry crystals. And now I'm going to weigh it out and see how much we got. So here is our final yield of crystals. We got around 28 grams. It's about 53% yield. I think the recrystallization from water lost us a lot of product. So maybe don't use water to recrystallize it in the future. So yeah, hope you enjoyed. Have a good one.